After Jesus had finished teaching the disciples, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. So we've arrived to this uh, last homily of my series called Living God's Way and Not My Own. If you've missed the previous two weekends, you can go to chathamcatholic.ca, take a look and click the link. You can listen or watch, or again, if you're having trouble sleeping, you can go and do the same thing and you'll rest for a long time, okay? In uh, the first homily a couple weeks ago, I focused on this uh, fact, to be faithful disciples, we need to discover and accept God's way and let go of our own, right? We don't try to get God to convince him to help us in what we want. Our lives of faith are really for us to discover where God wants us to go and then for us to follow his way. And that becomes a, a challenge, a tug of war in our spiritual lives that I think all of us at one time or another go through. But we do understand, you know, going God's way is going to fill us up the best. Last weekend, I talked about, you know, when we discover God's path and we want to live it out, what does it mean to follow God as a disciple? God's path requires humility, service, and being last. This brings grace, light, and joy for all. You know, Jesus said, you got to be servant of all and last of all. But our culture and kind of uh, the way we're, we're at now, we always want to try to be first. And I used different examples, but the one of trying to get on the airplane when you're flying somewhere. You know, you bought a ticket, you have your seat, no one else is going to take it. And yet when they start boarding and they didn't call your section, you're the first one in line. There's a rush to get on a plane that everyone has a seat on. You know, our society says you got to be first, you got to be best. Don't worry about other people, but the reality is, is that Jesus calls us to be last and to be a servant so that everyone can be filled with grace. Not only ourselves, but those around us and those in need. So today, I want to just talk about this. We are chosen and we are anointed to blaze a path to Christ who fulfills our lives. So we're called, we're equipped, we're strengthened, we're anointed, and we're called to blaze a path. So in, in a way, we have to chart new opportunities and new ways, which takes effort. You know, trying to create a new path for God's grace to fill our lives and the lives of others is going to be challenging. That's why Jesus says, you got to take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. To be disciples, we often take the path that is not often walked. And so we have to try to proclaim that good news, but we don't do it alone. God strengthens us 
And it's good for us to be reminded of this, and it's one of the reasons why we come to Mass, to be reminded that we're chosen, we're anointed, and we're, we're, we're sent out to create new paths, or to uncover paths that have been covered up, or lost, or forgotten. And the readings show us this. In the first reading we heard from the book of Numbers, but Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Of course, there were two that weren't part of the rest of the group and they were starting to be, be prophetic. And one of Joshua's servants comes and says, look, they're, they're doing something. Moses says, let everyone know that they're prophets. Let everyone know that they're chosen to participate and not be spectators or church goers and watch others and not realize that each of us imagine you know and what happened what Moses says in the book of numbers happens you know Jesus comes and at the resurrection sends the Holy Spirit on the apostles and what happens to us in baptism, strengthening, and confirmation? We are anointed. The Lord put his spirit within us. And how amazing it is when we gather together in power and grace, filled with love, to be prophets in our world today. Not just spectators, not just observers, but to truly participate and recognize the Lord's Spirit within us to have that courage to be disciples. You know, imagine if everyone in our family of parishes took an active role in the ministries and in the outreach as much as they can to proclaim God's love. Our city and our country would be transformed. But we need to realize that the Lord has called us, has anointed us, and has given his spirit to us. In the second reading, there's a, a warning about if we drift off of God's path and get caught up in ourselves and in possessions and things as we heard. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver has rusted and their rust will be evidence against you. Don't get caught up in this world and in the things of this world that dominates our lives, but that wears out. And not only should we worry about that for ourselves to be faithful and loving disciples, but to help those who are in need, who are caught up in things that wear out, in things that fade away. And we so often put most of our efforts into those things and not recognize and not take that pathway that God has given to us. That pathway of mission, of service, and of love. And in the gospel, the end of the gospel, Jesus get, reminds us of this. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. We need to take a look at those things in our lives that distract us, that take us away from where God wants us to be and to take them out, to cut them away so that we have a greater opportunity to be filled with love, with light, take opportunity to prayer, to be messengers, to be disciples of the good news. And so we can't get caught up with things that take us away but we need to also reflect in our lives what needs to be let go so that we can follow God's pathway. And finally, I want to share uh, a little bit, and this leads into, I think, being anointed, being chosen, and being, having the Spirit seen in our family of parishes. Last two Sundays, the 15th and the 22nd, we had special gatherings, listening sessions at St. Agnes to take a look at what we bring forward from St. Agnes as we continue to go through the closure process with the diocese. But then the second meeting is where do we prioritize our efforts as a family of parishes? 
And I was uh, uh, filled with grace and I was totally amazed at how the Holy Spirit worked with those who attended. And Linda Stout, who facilitated the conversation, one of the great things, this is gonna be one of the big legacy pieces of Pope Francis, is the opportunity for us to listen to one another and to listen to the Holy Spirit. Linda, at, when we began this process on the 15th said, that in these listening sessions, it's an opportunity for those who are more extroverts to listen. And for those who are quiet introverts to have the courage to be able to share without being challenged in what they were sharing. So it was equalizing the voices. And in the midst of it, it was done in prayer. The Holy Spirit spoke profoundly through those two gatherings. We've posted a report called Navigating the Path, which includes the summary uh, notes from those two meetings and kind of a uh, introduction that goes through kind of the context. And there are copies in all our churches, they're rose-colored documents also online. Please read it, not as just some document but it's a documentation of the Holy Spirit at work in our family of parishes. And I wanna quote a couple of things from what was shared. The first is this, it is important that we maintain our focus, keeping Christ at the center of our mission. The vision of our Ignite the Mission prayer can become a reality through praying it and acting upon it. That prayer we pray every weekend after the prayers of the faithful, we not only need to pray it, but we need to act on it, try to live it out, and that we're on mission. What difference that becomes when we recognize that we're called. It is important that we have a succession plan in place to ensure the Ignite the Mission continues. Our mission is greater than any individual. We are united in the shared goal of becoming a missionary church. This is the parishioner saying this. Now I'm glad that they're worried about succession planning because they're looking to get rid of me already. And that's a good thing. This quote really, really blew me away because the community is taking ownership of the pastoral plan and they're concerned that after I depart, after other pastoral teams over time change over, that it doesn't affect the path that we are on because we're chosen, we're anointed to go on this path to be missionaries and proclaimers of the good news. I saw in that quote, the Holy Spirit is working and, and very, very alive. And that we're on the right path. And finally, we don't want to lose the gifts and talents of the volunteers presently serving St. Agnes Ministries. Existing St. Agnes volunteers need to know their gifts and talents are needed, wanted, and welcomed at surrounding churches. When we get to the point of closure of St. Agnes, these are the concerns of the St. Agnes people. Will they feel welcome? Will they feel wanted? Will they feel accepted? Will the other churches in our family be willing to adapt and change as we embrace them more and more within eventually down there are the four churches in our family. And we're going to be exploring this fall as a family of parishes, how we're gonna be able to uh, incorporate and weave the St. Agnes volunteers, the gifts, ministries, the talents into the four churches that make up our family of parishes down the road. But I see this as a great sign and a great opportunity to strengthen the sense of one community one family with one mission. Take a look at those reports. You see the Holy Spirit alive, present, and well in our community. So, as we conclude, God's way is the best. What do we take away from the reflections today? Except the fact we are all chosen and anointed. There's no excuses, really. I can't do it, I don't have the gifts, I don't have the ability. Nope. Part of the, the 
the discernment is to figure out what gifts we have and where does God want us to share them. In our family, in our workplace, also in our family of parishes. Where, where am I being called? And that the Lord will grow those gifts and grow those talents. We can courageously go down that path. Secondly, we must set aside what distracts us from mission. We need to cut those things off. Our sins, our wasting of time. Got to cut those away so that we make more time for God and more opportunities for us to follow God's path because we're constantly tempted to be distracted. We're constantly tempted to be slowed down. And we also need to reflect on, am I an obstacle for others to encounter the Lord? And finally, our family of parishes is living this. We are on the right path. We are on God's path as disciples, as messengers of the good news, but we need more people to get involved. We need more people to discern that God has chosen us, has anointed us, and we have the courage to follow. So if you have an inkling or you need some help, call me, send me an email. We can chat so that we can all live God's way and not our own. We are chosen, we are anointed to blaze a path to Christ who fulfills our lives.